Hello, I'm JW, and in this video we'll be looking at this device. Uh, this is a Chilton voltage-operated earth leakage circuit breaker. Uh, this was one of the uh, two most common types which we used sort of back in the uh, early 80s and before. This particular one is actually brand new, never used. See, it's got the uh, sealing uh, gasket still in the end there. It even has its uh, original box. Uh, the reason it's in its original box unused is because it's broken. It doesn't actually uh, latch into the on position. So uh, we'll open it up, take a look inside and see how these things were made. Now I'd say these were uh, one of the uh, two most common types. Uh, this make the uh, Chilton being one of them, uh, the other being Crabtree, which were black rather than this uh, light grey colour. These uh, were essentially used up to around 1981. I think they were deleted from the regulations uh, a few years after that. And they were used on uh, systems which had a high earth impedance, typically on systems where you had an earth electrode as the only earth rather than one provided by the electricity supplier. Uh, these ones uh, had this gigantic yellow test button on the front, and some of them actually had the uh, push to test wording on the button itself. Uh, the idea being you would just press that and it would uh, trip off just to confirm that the earth connection was uh, correct and the device was still operating. Now this particular one has never been used. It still has the uh, plastic back plate. That was probably originally glued in with the uh, spots of glue there, but uh, 30 years in storage has uh, put a stop to that. Uh, this one is actually broken in that it's permanently in the off position. It won't actually latch on into uh, the on position. So probably somebody bought it, uh, found it was broken, therefore didn't install it, and uh, didn't return it to the supplier for some reason. So we'll have a look inside and see uh, what we can find in there. Now these two covers at the bottom would be simply where the wiring was intended to be connected. This is a double pole switch. So we should find that uh, we've just got the two terminals in and out. These little rubber gaskets are separate, and the intention was that you would put the cabling through those, and hence that would uh, fill up any gaps there so it wouldn't get any fingers, dust, or whatever else going in there. Two large holes, of course, for the uh, line of neutral wires to enter, and the two smaller ones uh, would have been for the earth to the installation, and of course the other earth going out to the electrode in the ground outside. Both identical, though of course you'd only connect the earth at uh, one end of the device with those two smaller terminals in there. You can see we've got the uh, line over this side and neutral over there with the N, and the two terminals for the earth marked E and F. E would be for the earth electrode, typically in the ground outside, F uh, for frame or the uh, connection to the installation itself. At this end of the device we see it's got the same connections, this one's actually marked P, presumably for phase, and again the neutral over there. The E and F markings are moulded in the plastic but uh, obviously there's no connections there since uh, those were made at the top. So those are the terminals you would use for uh, normally installing the device and a couple of holes there just to screw it to the wall or backboard or whatever. Now the back you wouldn't normally see because generally it would have this brown plate which was glued in position on the back. Some of them actually had the wiring diagram printed here. This uh, particular one does not. So let's undo some of these screws and see what we can find inside. So if we just take this out and this one. Now those two actually come through to the front, it would seem. Those appear to uh, secure the terminals in place. So uh, there we have them, just a uh, machined brass screw there. This looks like a steel covering and a brass strip to uh, connect into the rest of the device. Both identical. See here that would be the earth and frame connections going up to the internals of the thing. If we just take that screw out. Now we've got some other screws down in here which I can now get at. So if we undo this one and that one will be the same. And presumably those are the ones that come through, oh yes, to these uh, things on the front with the little hexagonal nuts into the uh, hexagonal moulding of the plastic. 
the same at the top, so uh, if we just repeat the process, presumably these ones will secure the terminals and that copper strap in place. Yep, that's it. Obviously they're quite a lot longer in this case to reach down to the uh, mechanism, which is obviously at this end of the device. Yep, same instruction as before. Just a little rivet uh, on the end there, which uh, presumably is to make some kind of contact inside. The other one has a similar arrangement there, rather than contacting onto the copper itself. And likewise, yeah, exactly the same. And I guess before we can now see those screws which hold the front panel. So let's see what we've got inside. Right, the front panel is simply just that moulded piece, nothing there. There's the yellow test button, and just a moulded plastic uh, item with a uh, tab in the middle there to press onto the uh, contact in here, presumably. Here's the lever. Now, bearing in mind this is broken, so uh, whether or not that was actually connected to something uh, isn't clear at this stage. So let's see what we have inside. Right, so inside the device we've got uh, the trip coil here at the bottom, which will just be a big coil of wire. It's covered in this sort of brown uh, papery covering. And uh, now we've got the laminated uh, core here made out of many uh, small sections of either steel or iron or something. Two connections to the coil. I've uh, got the yellow wire here and this red one underneath there. Uh, the red wire goes straight through underneath and connects through to the terminal here. That's the E terminal, which would be connected to the earth electrode in the ground. And that's actually permanently connected. That brass simply goes through to about here. And then the wire just goes through into the brass itself. The yellow wire on the other side of the coil uh, comes up there, of course, and just over to this terminal here. That rather odd looking uh, soldered on connection, which is uh, fairly surprising, as that could be actually a fairly weak point there. Now this is where the test button fits. Uh, this is the button that would fit in there. So that uh, peg would just press the contact there when you're depressing it. So in the normal position, it's just connected from here straight across to this. And this one goes straight to the other terminal there, the F terminal or frame terminal. And that's what would connect to the earth equipment in the installation. So normally the coil is connected between the uh, installation earth and the earth electrode. Hence, if there's any kind of fault, a voltage will appear across this coil, and obviously then the magnetic uh, force there will uh, pull on this various mechanical mechanism and disconnect the supply. Now, in the test position, this bar would be pressed down. This side will still be connected to that, as it's like a U-shaped piece. And on this side, it was disconnecting the earth to the installation, and instead reconnecting it to this terminal here. And that one is connected via a thin red wire, you can start to see in the bottom in there. And that actually goes across to this copper, which connects to the incoming line up here. So essentially just connecting the coil straight across the mains and the earth electrode. And of course that's going to put a fairly large voltage, or probably the full mains voltage across there, which will cause the device to trip and disconnect. Now the switch itself is this movable piece here. And you see it's got those copper pieces attached, and it has a spring that's come out somewhere in there. And these obviously move uh, up and down like that. And then the switching would be done by this contact here, which would, in normal circumstances, go underneath there, like that. So press down, it's going to be in the on position. When it's pushed up, presumably by that spring, then of course it's disconnected. And exactly the same on the other side, uh, both a uh, line and neutral are switched in this particular example. So this was actually broken, uh, presumably, when it was manufactured, so it's not entirely clear exactly how it would fit together. This doesn't appear to be attached in, in any way at all. Some kind of uh, mechanism on the back here. 
can see that's just the coil there with the uh, laminated core. The wires there, not a great deal in the bottom there, there's a lever here which is one that obviously operates the uh, switch itself. And so there's a spring has come out there so I'll see if I can uh, reassemble this in some fashion and uh, see if we can uh, at least demonstrate how it was supposed to operate. Right, well I've had a look at this and it's not uh, totally obvious uh, the uh, precise way this went together but the uh, general principle is I got the magnetic coil uh, behind there with the magnetic frame. Uh, when that's energised, uh, as in when there's a fault, uh, it will attract this piece of metal here at the bottom. And that's actually on a spring, you can see the spring just uh, in the back there. So that will obviously pull onto that. As you see that will then press onto this other piece of metal over here. And then over here there's a lever which uh, somehow connects into the uh, rod there. And that one there is goes up to the uh, contact at the top. And then you've got the little uh, slot onto that one which obviously was where the operating lever would fit there. And then that goes through the cover, obviously the hole with the on and off indication. Uh, there's obviously some problem with this, it's not entirely clear precisely how it was supposed to be assembled, but uh, the general principle would be that this would uh, obviously press onto this against the uh, spring at the top, which would hold it in on position, and then there's some kind of uh, thing here where it would trip and then uh, obviously release this bar from the uh, sprung pressure, opening the contacts at the top. So there's obviously something wrong here, this is all loose and uh, falling out and clearly not uh, correct at all and that bar underneath has got a spring on it that uh, unfortunately it does seem to stick in there like there it's totally uh, gone now so there's no spring on it so uh, obviously some sort of problem there but the uh, basic principles are there and uh, so it's very similar to that GEC one which I've done in another video I'll put a link to that in the description section below uh, this one of course is double pole so uh, it would disconnect both the line and the neutral in the event of a fault. Now one thing I did missing in this design is the test resistor. Uh, that GEC one and the uh, sort of usual diagrams you get for these had the uh, coil, uh, had the little test resistor in, so when you press in the test position there was a resistor between the line coming in and the contact there, so that would obviously limit the current via the coil, but this particular one doesn't have that. You see the yellow and red wires there just go directly to the terminals there and on the top here and that's just a strip of metal which again links through directly to that terminal at the bottom. So uh, no test resistor there, they've obviously designed the coil or assume that it's not going to be held on for long periods and uh, therefore can withstand the full mains across it on uh, what should be a fairly regular basis. This doesn't actually tell you uh, how often but it does say uh, push the yellow bar often so that would presumably be uh, well, once a month or something at least you would have thought. Certainly a problem if you kept it pressed down for an extended time, this is going to be permanently energised and will therefore heat up and uh, possibly uh, melt through and not work anymore. Because uh, even with the uh, power tripped off, if the uh, mains is coming at the top, you've got that uh, connection coming through the whole time. So that was a look inside the uh, Chilton Earth leakage uh, circuit breaker, so a voltage operated device unlike uh, modern RCDs which are current operated. Still in the original box but unfortunately broken so we can't actually test it to see if it still works. So there's the box there, so it's a double pole, uh, 60 amps, 415 volts uh, maximum, uh, 250 to earth, made by Osmo Chilton of Hungerford, England, a company which doesn't exist anymore and hasn't existed for a very long time. Until next time, thanks for watching.